Welcome to the Daily B Show with Maddie B and Dana Williams. So we're going to have a pretty awesome chat today about living a natural life holistically and just basically making your body feel absolutely amazing through healthy and natural living, which is I'm, I'm really pumped to talk to Dana about because it's something that I want to continue to learn and grow with. Um, quick shout out to the new affiliate and, and sponsors that have come on board to help us basically continue to run the show and bring this to you. So jump through the links, check out Amazon, Audible if you want to get your free trial and get some audio books to download some amazing books there. I can recommend a few as well. And in every every conversation, there's always one or two that generally pop up that we can recommend as well. Um, if you're looking to host your own retreats or even just get away for a luxury holiday, come up to the Sunshine Coast and connect with Malumba or Aquila Estate. And they're the ones to, to yeah, go check out. They're absolutely amazing and use the Daily B promo code um and on that i think that's it oh and also i am raising some money to build an orphanage over in uganda at the moment so um if you guys know anyone that has any skills around that or has any dollars that contribute to that as well jump through the link it's the the trim tab transformation foundation that i'm doing that through so i'd love your support there but yeah back to the uh the the cause of, of why we're all here and dana williams absolutely amazing passionate chef um, that just is organically and naturally just cooks her way through a kitchen and absolutely makes just mind boggling, um, amazing meals for everyone. And I've, I've had the pleasure of experiencing your work and what was, what I was drawn to the most was just how much love and how much passion you put into what you do, because you really do love and are passionate about what you do. Um, and now just seeing you write your book, which I know so many people that have been just hounding you for, like, give me some recipes, give me what you're doing. Like, I want to be able to have it there with me. And so Dana's put together a book for everyone as well. And she's just basically helping people just live a beautiful, organic and um, and healthy life naturally in, in, a, in a holistic and natural way. So Dana, thanks for joining us. And for those that haven't met you, um, I don't know, fill in the gaps that I missed maybe for what you're doing right now and what you're about. Okay, thank you so much for having me again, Maddie. It's my pleasure to talk to you and the guests. Um, yeah, so I, I feel that it's really important that I share where it all started because this isn't just something that, you know, I heard about and thought I would start doing or, um, you know, people started sharing with me and I become more interested. It was actually something that was, I believe, innately within me um, because, it was when I was nine years old that my, you know, I watched my grandfather pass away. And at that point in my life, I was really scared of death because I was really scared of losing this physical attachment to other people in my life, particularly my family, my friends and everything like that. And I just didn't want anyone else to ever go. And so literally in that moment, when I was nine years old, although I don't physically remember it now, but I've had many you know how we have recollections over life when we things seem like, oh, I've done that before or, oh, that's why that happened or that makes perfect sense. I had a memory this one day when I was talking and sharing about what I'm passionate about and why I do what I do and I remembered or oh, it just came through so clearly that when I was nine years old, I went on this quest to learn how we can prolong our health so that while we're here in this physical body and on this earthly plane, we can live a healthy, happy and long existence. And this hasn't just, like I said, been something that I've been thinking about for the last year or two. It's literally been the last 25 years of my life. And so I've been an extremely observant over this time. And what I've observed is the health of people is on a rapid decline and something seriously needs to be done. Yeah. And the information that we're getting given through the media, um, I don't believe to be conducive to healing. And there's many reasons for that. And I think it's almost common sense in this day and age that we cannot heal our living body made up of living cells with toxic man-made chemical poisons that aren't natural, okay? I know sometimes drugs can be beneficial in emergency medicine, in trauma, in serious accidents, but I do not believe it is the answer for people that simply choose not to <coughs> respect and honour their bodies and just think that in every single day they can eat rubbish food and put toxins on their bodies and just 
pretend that they're oblivious to all of this yeah. um, be the answer. Mm. And so, yeah, this is what I've literally spent my life in, in learning. And I just do things for me personally at the moment. Like I just follow my heart. I do things that I love. And all my businesses and all my um, the things that I've shared throughout my life is just based on my passions from within. Yeah, and it comes through straight away as well. And um, I'm glad that that's where you started as well, right back at the beginning, because it is a fad that a lot of people are catching on to. It is um, information that isn't taught wide enough um, or deep enough. And, you know, when, when you do start to see, you don't even need to dig that deep, but when you just see that what um, the science is bringing out, when you understand the intuitive nature of how your body and your system works, it really just becomes um, just very glaringly obvious um, mm. what path your body really wants you to take. Um, so, and you're big on the intuition as well, and we're just talking about before that, we're talking about that yes. before jumping on the show, but can you share a bit about um, what that means to really be intuitively led and and how I guess that's impacted you and, and your journey to be able to trust that um that sensation within yourself now. And while you do, I'm just going to get um, our Instagram and Facebook followers on as well. No problem. Yeah, so I feel um, <clears throat> intuition, like we all have an innate knowing and, you know, sometimes you'll hear things and you'll just be like, oh, that is just so far from the truth because your innate knowing is in alignment with that, you know, but that is literally our intuition and our body's signs telling us or leading us a certain way. And so I believe that, like, I was, I sort of have tuned in to my intuition. It's funny because I actually went to an intuitive evening last night. Oh, really? And here I was thinking that I was somewhat aware and intuitive. And, uh, yeah, I've got a wee way to go, let's just say. <laughs> I mean, every single person is intuitive. Yeah. But I believe the reason... We, we don't know this and we're not tuning into this is because it's numbed and dumbed down yeah. by the food we eat, the toxins and everything, um, you know, the poisons that we're given for our flu, you know, all of these things, they actually destroy ourselves and destroy our body and numb and dumb us. And so we it closes off our intuition because toxicity and things like that start to burden our body and we become less aware of what's actually going on. Mm. And so I find this so much so when I, I run a cleanse and detoxify your body naturally program. And in that, I simply try and inspire people to remove things from their life that they know are no longer serving them because we intuitively know. Yeah. You know, I intuitively know that when I drink alcohol, it makes me extremely sick and I choose to do it because I love the social setting. You know, it's like, oh, you know, let's go out and we're all having a nice dinner and we're all having a nice drink. And, you know, I love that. That's what I was conditioned in the past to yeah. be a part of. But that doesn't know, that no longer serves me because alcohol is like a poison to me. And so every time I drink, I spew up. Pardon? It's a poison to everyone, really. <laughs> well, it is. Yeah. But. What I'm saying is that over time we get so built up with toxicity that a little bit of alcohol doesn't affect our bodies mm. because our body's so toxic anyway. Mm. So when um, <clears throat> when we are drinking, you know, we have a, a threshold. You know how sometimes you're like, geez, I, I had one beer and I feel like I'm drunk. You know, it's because your threshold is lower than the person's threshold that drinks three beers every night. Yeah. So they might have five beers and they're like, oh, I'm feeling a bit tipsy. Yeah. You know, but that's just what we've programmed and conditioned our bodies to do. Yeah. And so in, in all of this stuff that um, decreases our body's intuition, what it also does it is it decreases our ability to tune into our own intuition. Yeah. So we even we're not we're not um, like innately thinking. Oh, what what's my body want right in this moment? We're living from the mind, and we're just like, I'm hungry. I'll grab those packet of chips. I'm hungry. Let's order pizza. Um, you know, yeah, oh, the, I mind, need the body as well is on in that mode of I'm used to surviving a certain level of toxicity, so that's what I'm prepared for. So even the messages that it's sending would be, I'm prepared to survive this and to not die from this toxicity as opposed to don't feed me that anymore, which is 
the which is the message that would have come through when we first had it. And and what I'm drawing from as well, Dana, is I read the easy way to, to control your alcohol from um, Alan Carr, mm. which he also wrote the easy way to quit smoking. And, yes, okay. Yeah, and one of the things he talks about is that when you um, have any type of poison, whether it be alcohol or a berry that's wrong for you, like you've got systems within your body to flush that out, to help you survive, to live. Mm. Um, and, and also like when you taste something and it doesn't taste good and you keep eating it, and then you adapt to that taste. Same with poisons, same with toxicities. So your body gets that level of just acceptance and ability to sort of flush it out and deal with it because it wants to wants you to survive. Um, so those original like signals of this tastes disgusting, first time everyone's had a drink of alcohol <laughs> or, yeah. or this or throwing up, like these are all the telltale signs of your body giving you the information. But because you keep feeding it that, it's like, okay, this is all that is in my environment to live on. I need to survive on this. And so it's, it's like it's a survival mechanism that we we adapt to just can keep consuming that those toxicities. So it makes sense. Yeah, and I... Uh, uh, just cut off. Yeah. I mean, and that makes perfect sense. They say that the, the microbiome in our gut is yeah. programmed by what we actually feed it. Yeah. as well so if we're always feeding it not you know processed foods and additives and all of that that's just what it's going to crave so it's actually quite hard to to change our eating habits because it's not even our mind it's actually our bacteria craving what they want to eat you know so we can change that by obviously changing the food that we choose to eat and it simply is that simple um, and, you know, intuition, for example, is like you get these gut feelings, you know, or you're like, man, I'm just really craving a green juice, you know, or I'm really craving, you know, a healthy meal, you know, like that's what actually happens to people. And that's our intuition. That's our body telling us what it actually needs and desires. But 90% of the time we're so unaware of that that we just don't even listen. Um, but I also look at intuition as an in intuitive eating, yeah. as in what does your body feel like in this moment, yeah. you know, like, and that's how I choose to eat, you know. I mean, I always base my meals off fruit and vegetables, nuts and seeds, herbs and spices, and then gluten-free grains and flour. Um, but when I'm about to eat a meal, and this is why it's quite challenging for me to write menu plans for other people, yeah. is because... You know, like I might not want, um, you know, quinoa salad for breakfast on or lunch on Wednesday because I'm really craving um, a smoothie. You know what I mean? And so if I've got a, um, a menu plan, I feel really, really restricted. Um, but I totally understand that as we're learning more about this, eating by intuition is quite difficult when our body is programmed by the addictions to food the the microbiome are programmed to what we've been feeding it or we've been numbed and dumbed by external um, things. So there's lots to take into consideration. But the most simple thing that I find is the cleaner our vessel is by what we choose to put in and on it every single day, the, the height, more heightened our connection with self and intuition is. And that's so, just, yeah, this is a part of life hacking flow mm -hmm. and raising our vibration and our energy levels is all a part of that. And I'd love you to go back just one step because you just skimmed over it really quickly of the the fruit, vegetables, seeds, nuts, herbs, um, gluten-free, wheat and, and things that you use. But can you touch on them again and list out those things that you just naturally are drawn to and just give a little bit of an explanation as to why specifically that group of, um, of substances or foods and why why not the, the other things outside of that? And and also just okay, so a comment that Sam Trucker said. Um, uh, Sam Tucker said the gut feeds the brain. Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, they say that the the gut is the brain. You know that the gut's bigger than our brain. Yeah. So it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really essential to nourish our gut so it can nourish our brain because we get the messages from the brain to the gut but we get more messages from the gut to the brain and so if our 
you know, gut's not healthy, then it's yeah. actually affecting our ability to communicate with ourselves, which then in turn affects our immune system, it affects our cellular function, it affects our organ health and all of that because our body's not working optimally. Yeah, okay. And so leading into um, those those foods that you use? Yeah, so I actually wrote this in my book. Okay. So um, I did write, uh, this is actually my book. Um, so oh, it came about place. when... Beautiful. Celebratory you know meals, plant-based, yep. Celebrate, yeah, celebratory meals for uh, plant-based meals for all occasions. So this actually was, um, I did a, a webinar on like healthy food for Christmas. Yep. And because it was literally based off what I ate for Christmas and what I had the year before. Cool. And so like we have Christmas with my family usually in the morning. Like back in the day, it used to be that we'd give us give each other chocolates for Christmas, like Rose's chocolates. That was a Christmas thing. Yeah. But then I stopped eating chocolate. And um, the reason for that is because of the sugar and the, all the ingredients in there aren't actually natural and they've all been processed that many times. We don't get any nutrition for it. So when I started looking at how we could eat for nutrition, I just started eliminating things that weren't nourishing me. And so instead of having these chocolates, what we did is now we don't, you know, the family doesn't buy chocolate for each other because we just, you know, we're all really health conscious now and we just don't. Yeah. But um, like for our Christmas, we'd have a big platter, fresh fruit and bliss balls, and I'd make raw chocolates and... um. We'd add, um, oh, like mixed nuts and make a slice and just all of these things. And that would be our morning breakfast together as a family on Christmas Day. And so I share that in here, like the bliss balls and that. Um, and then we'd go on to, you know, usually just having one big meal of the day, whether it be a lunch or a dinner, because um, there's always way too much food on Christmas. Yeah. Your belly doesn't change sizes, whether it's Christmas Day or um, your birthday, yeah. you've still got the same size belly, so you don't physically need to eat um, enough food for 30,000 people in one meal just because it's Christmas. <laughs> so um, that's what this happens, though. It's absolutely crazy. It is. Um, yeah. Anyway, so then I just shared some other recipes. Pardon? Yeah, it is Pardon? what happens. It's the season to be jolly. We It's the time for giving, and we give so much to our belly. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we just don't need to give ourselves that much. No. <laughs> give ourselves a <full> lot. <laughs> um, but anyway, so yeah, back to this. Um, maybe do, should I read this page? Yeah. Okay. So this is um, this is what I share at the front of my book to help people get into this mindset of eating more healthy food, yeah. and um, and why you might like to do that. So. Um, it says something else, but anyway, these meal snacks and goodies can be enjoyed whenever you have friends over, want to make a beautiful meal for yourself or for a special celebration at any time of the year. Mix up the ingredients, add your own twist and enjoy the same recipe up to five different ways. You can swap ingredients to make a completely different meal and over time, practicing with flavors and mixing things up with this and that, you will quickly learn how easy it is to handcraft delicious, simple, healthy meals from whole food ingredients. I love sharing how fast and easy it is to create healthy meals from wholesome ingredients that actually taste delicious. I believe our bodies are in, constantly in a state of healing and we need to support them through the way we choose to live our life. The food we put into our bodies and is an essential, a daily necessity unless you are fasting. Therefore, we get to nourish our bodies with the goodness from the earth, feed, which feeds our cells, boosts immunity, purifies our lives, our life, promotes vitality and life force energy so we're healthy from the inside out, feel well and live disease-free. If we cut our skin, our body immediately starts healing the wound. If we're exposed to our virus, our white blood cells go on the war path to fight it and we are completely unaware of any of it. The process of digesting food is one of the most complex jobs our bodies have to do, and it has to do this several times a day. It's that complex when, that the body's process of healing pauses when the food we eat is digesting. 
Freshly squeezed juices, fresh fruit smoothies and fresh fruit do not inhibit the body's healing process or slow down digesting. So digestion. So adding these to your daily diet is highly beneficial. As you can imagine, if you're feeding your body food devoid of any nutrients, then it's the then the body's energy is focused on digesting this fuel that doesn't provide any nutrition. It's common sense that over time we will gradually slow down and our health will be affected. I believe that we create health or sickness within our bodies. And I love to share how much holistic living, toxin-free products, real food, plant-based goodness, and making self-care a priority can positively affect your well-being. I find it easy to eat well, keeping in mind if we eat more foods that are alive and living, they nourish our living cells rather than processed, packaged, and commercially mass-produced food that's already dead. When we eat a diet made up of organic of ideally organic, fresh, seasonal, plant-based, raw where possible, whole foods, fresh fruit, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, herbs, spices, ferments, pickles, sprouted legumes, smoothies, juices, kefir, gluten-free grains and seeds as desired, our bodies have more energy to fight pathogens, rebuild tissue, strengthen our immune system, detoxify, lose weight, alcohol, alkalize and keep us well, happy and healthy. Hell yes. Yeah. So the reason why I've chosen those foods is because they're food in their natural state and they're a single ingredient. So therefore our body physically recognises it when it gets it and they contain an abundance that we don't even, we can, we nobody even has found out the abundance of vitamins, minerals, enzymes, antioxidants, nutrients available Mm. to us in real food because it's just not possible. But they know that it's incredibly abundant in all of the above. So, Mm. you know, and I mean, I've been cooking like this for years now. As I've been learning this, I've made making changes. And so I always say to people, always do your best until you know better. Because often when I talk to people and like, or they get to know me, they start getting really overwhelmed because yeah. I'm quite an extremist. But that, remember, this hasn't happened overnight. It's literally been my life, so it's all I know. Yeah. So, you know, so it's it's been created over twenty five years, and then I get people coming to me that are so far at the other end of the spectrum, and I start sort of sharing this. And then they just, it's just all too much for them and too overwhelming. So I always say, like, what is your number one priority? And what is the first thing that you need to change and do that? You know, that might take you three months to do, and that's perfectly okay because you've still got another 30, 40, or 50 years ahead of you. The biggest thing is, is that you don't start and then you only have 10 years ahead of you you know, which is what's happening in people now are getting diseases and they're having to take drugs for the rest of their life. And unfortunately, the um, side effects of those drugs for the rest of their life shortens their lifespans, affects their um, essential organs and continues to add toxicity to the body, causing all sorts of other conditions. Mm. So it's just really easy. You know, we have to get back to basics. Like if it's... Um, I, I love this saying, if it's if it comes from a plant, eat it. If it's made in a plant, don't. <laughs> yeah, cool. <laughs> so, keep that one in mind. <laughs> <Done>. <laughs> um, so, that yeah, that's, that's so simple as well, but you're right, it is so overwhelming and it's really easy to judge ourselves based on the people that we're aspiring mm. to be like. And it's really easy to do that, but then not recognize that Dana's been doing this for 25 fucking years. Like this isn't, like you said, it's not the start. It's not something you've done for the last 12 months. And it's like, oh, now I eat all nice and healthy. It's this has been ingrained within you. It's been a passion, something that you've been mindful of, really observant of the people around you and your own and your own state for 25 years. Like this is a state of mastery that you've created. Um, but Dana, tell me like, is it, um, has it been a challenge for you to communicate that or was that a, a process for you to really be able to communicate back to people that are at that ground zero from where you are after so much experience and, 
and doing it for so long just naturally or how now, to be honest i don't i don't even believe i quite know the extent of where i'm at yeah. because like because this has been my life yeah. and i really have never ever been swayed by the media by the radio by you know like i don't you know how there's you know they're always promoting you need this for this and you always need to have your flu vaccination and you need to have this and you need to and like to me my body is just like no that's a load of shit you know like we cannot heal adding toxicity and so like i i automatically personally just get such this resistance to the information that i'm just like it's simply not for me so what happened is Years and years ago, I stopped watching the news. I stopped listening to the radio. I stopped. I never read the newspaper. I really don't have a lot to do with the outside world apart from, you know, being on Facebook and scrolling through Instagram and stuff. But the thing is, is that you can choose your, you know, who you follow and who who's in your life. So, again, I only choose people that, um, you know, that are sort of like-minded. Yeah. So I really aren't close, but, you know, it really put things into perspective for me is that, like, this is just the way that I've eaten now for probably at least four years, you know, taking full responsibility of everything I put into my body. But um, prior to that, I, you know, like I used to eat chocolate. Like 10 years ago, I ate normal chocolate. If somebody had a bar of chocolate, I'd eat it. I'd learnt about it. And then I realised, oh, it wasn't serving my cells. I'm going to find it a replacement for chocolate. And that's why I make my own raw chocolates and raw cakes and everything because I'm not missing out on anything. But what happened is, so this is just really normal for me. And then it wasn't until, like, I started the latest business, Patch Yama. And, you know, the whole concept of this is providing this kind of food that's totally regenerative to the body in every way, shape or form to the general public. Because I totally understand some people don't have this knowledge. Like they can't just make it a lasagna fully out of plants, gluten-free with no additives or anything. You know, they, they don't know how to make a loaf of bread without gluten or any sugar or, you know, that all these basic things that for me, it's like I think of a recipe and it's just like right there. It's almost like I've got a notepad to the side of my head and the recipe is right there. So somebody's like, man, I feel like, you know, sweet potato and kale curry with such and such and such I'm like okay and I just walk over to the kitchen and I just it's there like I have this incredible ability to um to tap into the universe's recipe book yeah. okay the healthy one and so that was so fun to watch as well like for those unaware like I met Dana on a retreat and she was the cook at the retreat and she I was just in awe just sitting there at the kitchen watching her just do her stuff and yeah, just asking questions just like this about how the hell she's putting all this together, where she's pulling it all from. <laughs> she's just like, abracadabra, there it is. <laughs> yeah. And so back to my story was that, because I always go off on a huge tangent to get back <laughs> to the point, um, was, yeah, is that as I started investigating and learning what food does to the body and the importance of not putting anything bad into it, I started only making food like that mm. and it was one day that I um you know had a new client or was chatting to a new client at, about the patchy yama services you know and I was just explaining how there's no numbers there's no colors there's absolutely nothing that's artificial that I literally make everything from scratch using whole ing ingredients or things that are the only ingredient mm. and that every ingredient that I source is like the best quality so it's not like I'm just going to the supermarket and buying anything off the shelf. It's like I'm ordering in from where I know the food comes and is sourced well, um, which is also affects the quality of the food. And I was just talking about this and it just seemed so normal to me. Mm. And this client was like, I don't think I've ever eaten anything like that in my life, you know? Yeah. And then I was like, yeah, true, because... And it was right then in that moment, which was only just a few years ago, I mean, sorry, a few months ago, like maybe six months ago, that I was like, wow, you know, people, and it's not, people don't know that's what it is. It's nothing about them choosing another way or them being anything. It's just that they actually don't know. Yeah. And 
we are so influenced by everything external, by the media, by the opinions of others, by whatever's the latest craze, whatever the media is putting out so that we jump on and follow at the expense of our own health and our own, you know, life, really. Absolutely. Um, people are so, so into that that they're really, really swayed. And all of that, unfortunately, is man-made. When did you ever see an ad on the TV saying, make sure you're adding a you know, bowl of fresh raw vegetables to your diet every day, highly abundant in vitamins and minerals where you get all of your nutrients. It's what's going to give you fibre so that you poo every day. You know, when do we ever get that? It's like, no, need a vitamin, take this out of a plastic thing made in plastic capsules and here you've got your vitamins and minerals, you, you know. so. Pardon? Did you have a cooking class at school or anything like that? Yeah, we did, but I wasn't interested. I maybe had one in one or two year levels, I think, home economics we had, and that was yeah. those were like baking scones and shit. Exactly. Nothing. Yeah, I wasn't interested because it was scones and I just didn't like like heavy, floury, crappy stuff. And the thing is, is that my mum and dad, you know, like they had four kids in one wage so they literally grew all of their own food. And I think, you know, the only things that we got at the supermarket, I think, was like wheat bix because we had a cow. Yeah. We milked our cow. Yes. Um, so the only, you know, like we got like three things at the supermarket. So it was like I never even knew, like if that was like mum made pasta sauces, mum made cool. everything, soup. She canned her own, you know. So it was like it's just what I know. Yeah. And I think sure. that's the difference is that, I think what I know is different to what people know if they have um, learnt from the media, you know? So you've been with, um, like, done a lot of work on yourself, been to a lot of um, educational seminars and, and been a whole journey, but have you sort of been collecting and collating a lot of the scientific research and the papers and the the, um, the understandings to back up and and really just give depth to all of this as well along the way no 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 that's not yeah it's not and that's probably you know that might be something that I look into in the future but it really doesn't like I don't like that yeah. you know and I know it's really important and I know that we've been conditioned and programmed to know the science behind it all and you know because ultimately that's the truth we've been led to believe but for me it's more so like I just do it for myself and yeah. you know like it's not I mean maybe in the future if I wanted to make a business out of this and all of this I would need all of that information yeah. but at the moment this point, has just really. been a passion, passion of mine that I've followed my life for my whole life and um you know, I find with scientific articles and stuff, they word things really quite advanced and that's yeah. not my my expertise, yeah. you know. Like some people are really good at that and I, I can read things and I can make sense of things but it's not where I, I, I've just got no interest. And many a times throughout the year people are like to me, you can't say that because you've got no evidence to back it up. Show me the piece of paper that's this and that. And I'm just like, I don't need, you know, like it's not about that. Yeah. Like if you don't believe it, you don't have to believe it because it's like yeah. not everyone's going to believe the same thing. Um, but I was, I was like, I know that's so true within my being that I cannot physically um, go against my yeah. my belief, you know. Like, and I think the thing is, is I find like energetically, if we're continuing to choose something that's not in alignment with ourselves, we always feel life's difficult like it always feels like we're pulling against like there's no flow there's no ease there's no comfort yeah. it's you know it's like you're literally going against your innate being and so I find like me with research and stuff and when people say that to me I'm just like it just it creates that you know, um, but I see the value in it. I totally believe it all. And I feel that if this was going to be something that it was going to be my profession as to say, I would need stuff like that, you know. Um, but at, at, at the moment, um, because this is just like a personal life experience, um, I get to create it how I want. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, it's like Richard Branson says, he, he just combines playtime and work time. It's the one thing. It's not like they're two separate things. Mm. Like creating, Absolutely. Yeah, creating your life around what you love, which is mm-hmm. what you're doing. Yeah. So share with us um, the story about what's just happened recently. You've had a friend come or had, you've had someone come and visit you and stay with you for a period of time and really just wanting to dive deep into this and take on as much information as they can and learn from you. So you've allowed them to come and, and live in your space and in, in your world and just to bestow a lot of this information on them. Can you share a bit about how that came about and, yeah, the, the sort of journey that you saw her go through throughout that process? So, yeah, it was amazing. So um, about was maybe about eight or nine years ago with my ex-partner, I bought a 100 acres of native bush in New Zealand and the idea for that was to set up like a healing centre and a retreat space where people could physically come and not be looked after but have access to everything that is regenerative for their body and soul. Because I feel that we just get so caught up in our own day-to-day life that even if we are participating in some self-care program or something like that, it's really hard to implement the changes when we're still in that busy life. And so it's just like because this has just been a part of my life, I could see this was really something that, you know, people desired. And so it's always been a passion of mine and that relationship fell through and so I didn't have the land anymore. And so I sort of have lost sight of that vision. But lately I've been thinking about how I could make it work just in sort of every day-to-day life. And then my friend actually, so she's a lady that I met two and a half years ago and she's in my Detox and Cleanse Your Body Naturally program and we've been friends for those last couple of years. And... um, she actually just approached me and said, would you ever consider this? And I was like, absolutely. I was like, this has just been something that I would love to do and I've always wanted, um, but I just never sort of saw it working. And, you know, like it's just sort of not like people don't just have people come and live in their house as clients. Like it's sort of not really what goes on. But I didn't see why that would be a problem because I don't care. You know, my partner doesn't care. We've got a house and we've got everything that someone would need. So, um, yeah, so I just said yes, and so we made it happen, and it was just an incredible experience. So the reason she came is because she had, um, you know, wanted to have a healthy relationship with the food and know what to cook and know what to eat. And so what I was, um, you know, like when she came here, she wanted a meal plan. So she wanted to have a meal plan that she could stick to Um, so that it made it really easy for her. And so I believe that they work, but sometimes they don't because they can be quite restrictive, like I mentioned earlier on. Um, But, yeah, it also was an opportunity for her to get out of her own life because this is the thing, like you've still got to do the dishes, you've still got to clean the house, you've still got your kids, you've still got your husband, you've still got to worry about them, you've still got to drop them off at work and pick them up. And so she was finding it really difficult in her life to fully invest time in, in, into herself. Yeah. And so that's what this opportunity gave her is a chance to get out. She didn't have any washing to do because I wouldn't let her do mine, I wouldn't let her clean the house, you know. Like I let her step into herself so that she could just see what came up and and um, have some time out. Yeah. And during the time... Um, yeah, we obviously had every meal together and I actually made her cook, make it so that she could she could put hands on, see how easy it was, experiment it, experiment in my kitchen and then I had her, I was there saying, okay, how does it taste? What do you think you need? So that she was learning for herself. Mm. Um, and... Yeah, it was just really amazing. So for the first part of it, we, um, we we practiced intuitive eating because ultimately that is the goal. Um, I believe that's the goal for everybody is to trust in their own body and to, to remove the addictions from food from their life so they truly can tune into themselves and they know what their body needs in the moment. And so I'm not talking about it needs 
such a specific, it might just be like, man, I feel like a smoothie now. I'm like, I'm really feeling like pancakes. Yeah. And so it's actually listening and actually having what you want. If you want pancakes, eat pancakes, but don't go out and buy packet things and mix it with milk and egg and then put cream, you know, like make your own pancakes and make your own fermented yogurts and have some fresh fruit with it and enjoy that and let that be okay. And, you know, so, and then I just, we were just practicing things like, you know, you can literally eat anything you want, but then we get to think about, is it actually what you want to nourish your body with, you know? So you want to eat chocolate because we're addicted to it, but is it really? No. Every time we eat it, we feel guilty. We feel bad about it. We put ourselves down. We restrict down the meal. We skip a meal, we do something crazy. So it's like, well, you can eat chocolate, but why don't make your own chocolate so it's high in iron, magnesium, calcium, it's healthy fats, real salt, not toxic salt, you know, basic things like that. And so, yeah, that was the journey, and it was just amazing. And, um, you know, we went to Crystal Castle. We did, um, like, different like I bought, did questions and stuff with her just to bring awareness and just to see what her mindset is around food yeah. because this is it, like we've all created something yeah. and that's it. It's like it's rechanging. She had previously been seeing a nutritionist and a dietitian, um, but what happened is they said that she had to eat meat every meal and meat, eggs or dairy every meal and she actually didn't, prior to going to see them, she didn't eat meat. Um, dairy, fish or eggs mm. but because that's what they promoted and they said, she said she'll give it a go and she ended up feeling lethargic, tired she was constipated she started putting on weight you know, she just wasn't feeling her best so she, you know, we were having conversations prior to her even asking me to come and I was like you really have to tune into your body it's telling you don't you don't want it so don't eat it, you know, she was like but I don't know what to eat so that's when it all came about, you know. Um, and, yeah, so and then we're just, like, obviously lots of conversations and stuff because we've all created, I find, these, these um, yeah, I don't know, restrictions around food, you know. Like, for example, she had tried every single diet in the world. So what that's done is that put so many foods that are actually essential for us to eat in good or bad categories. Mm. And I don't personally believe anything is good or bad because if you're sitting there saying that this piece of chocolate cake made out of chemicals is the most amazing thing in the world, I can't wait to eat it because it's just my favourite thing, it's probably going to be good for you, you know? But it's like if you're sitting there, you've got cake in the cupboard and you sneak over and you make sure no one's looking and then you eat the whole cake and then you... You know, don't eat for three days because you feel so bad. That's when yeah. we know there needs to be, you know, some awareness. And that's mm. like people literally block those incidents out of their life yeah. and it will happen two or three times a week, but they won't remember it because it's, it's mm. yeah, it's quite so interesting. <clears throat> your intention and the, um, yeah, the intention you hold behind your actions is, is massive. Yeah, well, it's, it's, uh, it's, I believe it's bringing people back to themselves. Yeah. It's taking away everything that they believe is external, that outside of them, that's the answer, and bringing into what is their answer, you know? Yeah. Do you feel that she's... And then the, the ultimate thing is that you... Can, I know, you finish? Pardon? No, you, you go, I was sorry. just about to say the ultimate thing is is that you can eat whatever you want whenever you want that's perfectly okay yeah. but the key is to make sure that it's made out of whole food and not chemical foods and that's it yeah you know and it's simple simple <laughs> do you feel she's um now equipped well, to go me, and pass yeah. that on to to people in her network her kids her friends her family to really start guiding them to be intuitively led or is that um like how is that, do you feel, it going to be, the, what's the best way to spread that throughout our, our network and our, the people that we love to promote that intuitively led eating? Yeah, well, she actually does, um, yeah, she works with, she did, runs Juice Fasts in Bali. So, you know, like juice fasting is an easy thing, right? All you need to do is commit 
and not eat during that time. Yeah. So, you know, like um, she's she's already into all of this and this is the thing is you can know everything but not be applying it to yourself yes. and that's where the problem with her is that she knew everything. I didn't need to teach her anything. Yeah. I just needed to help keep reminding her that she was allowed to choose herself and that she now got to choose herself. And so that every action she made was based around that. Yeah. What advice do you have to so, people that aren't putting themselves first like that? And aren't, and or, or how do you best see people really implementing and um, holding themselves accountable? Because a lot of people know all the stuff. They're just not doing it. They do. Everybody knows everything. They're just not doing it. Um, the reason why they're not doing it is simply because they're not making themselves a priority and they're keeping making everything outside of them. You know, like the only time is one, like, well, if you don't value yourself enough, you know, this is a big thing. And some people simply won't even do anything for themselves because they don't care for themselves. So that's like a whole other, you know, like you have to define differentiate what's actually going on in the first place yeah. you know like some people will care for themselves really well by taking themselves out drinking every weekend you know what I mean but that's their way of caring not in the terms of health but that's their way of doing nice things for themselves yeah. you know so I, I just think one you have to make yourself a priority but you have to make yourself a, your health a priority and i think most of the time it's not until people get sick that they even think they need to worry about their health and usually then it's too late because disease and illness and stuff like that doesn't just occur over two or three weeks it it's a um cumulative effect over 15 to 20 years yeah. you know or five to 20 years so you know, this this gets to be, I say, you get to choose yourself, you know, and it's sometimes people, they're so not used to doing this that they don't even know where to start. But so for me in my cleanse and detox program, like what I do is just like do one nice thing for yourself, you know. It might be looking at yourself in the mirror and telling you how much, you know, how beautiful you are. And even for some people, they can't do that yet, it's you know, fun, yeah. or yeah, and or, or drinking water every day. Like some people don't even drink water, you know. So, yeah. so one thing they might choose to do is commit to drinking two to three litres of water a day and that be something nice to themselves. And the other thing is is that I, I express is that it's really important to um, um, be proud of yourself and congratulate yourself. You know, like if you, if you commit to one thing for the day, drink more water, when you get to the day, like, wow, I did it. That was easy. Yeah. I can do that again. Like, wow, I feel so much better. I didn't realise that I could, you know, I was able to achieve that. You know, all of these things because it's your own support that gets you by, not the support of external people or anything like that. Um, I love that. So yeah. Yeah, I love it. It's, it's so true because we can have all the support in the world, but unless we're willing to give it to ourselves, mm. then it's going to come crashing down. Awesome, Dana. Where can people find your book? Where can they find your detox program? Where can they find you? And where's the best place they can find all this beautiful food if they're looking around their local area? Well, um, so on Instagram and Facebook, I've got the Patch of Yama Gold Coast. So it's GC. Um, and that's the food business where you can order food to your house each week. Juices, smoothies, snacks, main meals, anything. Um, I also do, obviously, retreat catering and um, catering for different things. I do cooking demonstrations. I haven't got any actually booked at the moment because we are due to move, um, but I have been just doing one-on-one -on -one, um, cooking demos with clients or going to their, their house and just cooking with a few of their friends. So if really that's something too. you're interested in, then... Just, I don't know, somewhere around here. Okay, just cool. we just got to get out of this house. Yeah. yeah okay. um, because the internet's so bad and everything, you know. So we're ready to have a move. <laughs> exactly. Um, but that's okay. Um, and then, so, yeah, and then my Facebook and Instagram as well um, is on there. I am in the process of getting a website set up, 
which is for the Pachayama business, which I'll have the um, the book on, so you can purchase the book. But at the moment, um, because this is all just for me, like I said, I just re really haven't got anything organized. And um, if you want anything, you just get to personally talk to me. So I'm really, really friendly, and I like talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. So if you want anything from me, let me know. <laughs> And what, a, what an amazing opportunity at this time as well, because you are like you have, like you said, you've been doing this for yourself, but essentially you are an in-demand person. Your skills are an in-demand skill set, and I, one of the two is gonna gonna crack. Either you're gonna turn into a hermit and sh like push people away, or you're gonna get in so such high demand that you, your prices are gonna go through the roof because of how much demand you'll be in. So. At the moment, this space is such a great opportunity for people to connect with you on such a personal basis that's not going to be available for, for very long as well, is my prediction. Yeah, anyway. yeah well, it's, I mean, I'm also in the process of doing some other things so that I can get this information out here in a really easy way, like running programs and um, doing more recipe books. Um yeah. And then, yeah, having a website and stuff. But, you know, at the moment I'm just still um, compiling my own personal experiment from life and uh, I'll do something with it very soon. <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. No worries, Dana. Thank you. And thank you guys for watching. Um, yeah, connect with Dana. Looking forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. And, yeah, love you lots. Thanks, Maddie. See you guys. Bye-bye.